Hey, I wasn't sure if I wanted to make a video on this game. I remember playing it for a while when I was younger, but I can barely remember if I liked it or not. And in that case, should it even be on the weird nostalgia category? Well, yeah. Weirdly enough, I have a lot of memories of myself booting up this game, but barely remember anything besides the first car. This kept me curious until last week when I started playing it again. So again, this video will be proof that sometimes memories should only be that. Memories. LA Rush is a game developed by Midway Newcastle, which was known as Pitbull Syndicate before they were sold to Midway in 2005. Uh, okay, now keep up with me for a second. This is pretty interesting and will be important for later. Their Wikipedia page says that they were formed by an assemble of programmers and artists with extensive experience in the video game industry. Their first game was Test Drive 4 in 1997, published by Accolade, which received mediocre reviews. Then, in 1998, they made Blast Radius, which was a space combat simulator published by Psygnosis, which seems to have gotten a little bit better reviews. And then they made two more test drive games in the same year, published by Accolade again. And then in 1999 they made Test Drive 6, but published by Infogrames. And then in 2002 they made TD Overdrive, the Brotherhood of Speed. For some reason they were bought by Midway, where their only games were LA Rush and Wheelman, which you might know. They were closed in 2009 after the sale of Midway Assets to Warner. And then the founder of Pitbull Syndicate announced the formation of Pitbull Studio in 2010. Now you might be thinking who? And that's where it gets confusing. Because their Wikipedia says that they made Silent Hill Downpour and Gears of War Judgment. But you can't find a single mention of Pitbull games on any of the game's pages. I looked on Moby Games, Wikipedia, and their own website, but it only looks like this. So really, I have no idea what is going on. I know they merged into Epic Games UK, but their story is confusing to say the least. But okay, uh, back to Midway Newcastle. There's not much about the development of this game online. The only thing I could find was an IGN interview about the game which got updated in 2012 for some reason. But the game is supposed to be part of the Rush series. You know, San Francisco Rush? Yeah. They compared themselves a lot to Burnout, saying that the game didn't so well in the US because it only has made up locations and cars. And that their game brings these things to reinvent the franchise. Huh, I wonder how that worked out. I'll make this clear already because it will be obvious really quickly, but this game looks like something you'd see someone play in a movie. You know like the video clip in Californication? Yeah. Everything in this game is extremely over the top and I don't mean it in a good way. I mean it in like... Adel don't like losing money, especially the TV. If he didn't want to lose his money, then there's one thing he should not have done. What's that? Invited you to join the party. I don't usually say things like this, but I was cringing my entire playthrough of this game. This must be some of the most awkward cutscenes I have ever witnessed in my entire life. The entire game seems to take place inside a kid's head while playing with Hot Wheels. You play as the rich guy throwing a party at your mansion, and there's girls and rich people and you're talking about cars, and then the bad guy shows up and he takes away your cars because you talk back to him, and then you go out taking your cars back because you're the most badass in the game. I'll try to leave the story to the side, you can watch the cutscenes on YouTube if you want to, but be warned, you're not gonna be able to forget it. I know you ain't talking to Lana like that. Change is coming. First drop into the game, you notice that it seems to look pretty good for a PS2 game. The reflections on the car stand out a lot while playing it. But then you turn the car and you notice that this game has some of the worst physics to ever touch a racing game. You can barely push your analog to the side and your car will fly in that direction. You know how they say that graphics don't matter and gameplay is the most important aspect of a video game? While I don't agree that graphics simply don't matter, this game is pushing its luck really bad. 
it is something that you will look at and be like, hey, this seems pretty cool. I actually thought that it looked a lot like Midnight Club LA before I played it. But trust me, even if you don't like that game, it is miles better than whatever this gameplay is. Oh, and the reflections I mentioned? Well, it's obviously not real ray trace reflections, but I feel like they could have put some effort so that it didn't have the daylight reflection when it's night at the game. I've never actually felt so cheated in my life. I don't think there's a single thing that I can say about this game that is just, yeah, this is good, and that's it. Oh, and did you notice that there are stars in the top right? I mean, GTA has them, so they gotta put it in their game too, right? And don't expect it to work like in GTA. You might just get a star out of nowhere. Or maybe four stars, and then the police is just like, eh, whatever. And then you have no stars, and then it jumps to three again. It is simply all over the place. Oh, and do you know what happens if they catch you? You can run, but you cannot hide. Pull that thing to the side. Ah, <sighs> uh, okay. Uh, let's calm down. I've never been to LA before, but it seems like they put a lot of effort into the map of this game. It's always full of people, cars, stuff that you can run into, and you're not just stuck into the roads, you can go off-road, inside the alleys, whatever. It really feels like a real city to go around. And then, whoever designed these races must have been completely out of their mind. The game just expects you to know where to go, while they put a checkpoint in the middle of an intersection and you gotta pick a side and hope it's the right one. Am I the one going crazy or is this one of the worst designs ever? I mean, watch Big Rigs and you'll see you have one road to follow. And that's it. Big Rigs has a better level design than this game, it's amazing. And then you're gonna tell me, oh it's alright, you just have to restart the race and try again. No, you can't. There's no restart. If you lose a race, you can't even start the same race again. You gotta go back to the last race because you have an entry fee that you gotta pay for each race. And if you don't have enough money, you gotta go back to a race that's free and then farm money to go back to where you were. And while this game isn't hard to the point that you have to do this all the time, it is sometimes simply unfair. Like, I was playing with this Chevy that I don't even know. And I got put against two Salines S7 and a Viper. And thank god I used save states here, because I wasted two hours in this race only with the save states. But wait, it's not just the races. You have this other mode where you gotta go to a place, get into a random car, and drive it back to your house while the bad guys try to crash your car. It should be pretty easy, right? Don't worry though, because this game got you covered. Did you notice the MTV and pin my ride ads the entire city? Yeah, this means exactly what you think. You can get your ride pimped. Sixty six Pontiac GTO. This got dressed up with some new school accessories: chrome blower, shaved door handles, and chrome bumpers front and rear. The Nitro system and Pro Charger guarantees that this old school ride is well equipped to lead the pack. Uh, what? You expect it to actually do it yourself? Change the color at least? See what it looks like before you pay half of the money you have on it? What is wrong with you? Anyway, after you win the last race against the bad guy, you go home to your party to find your first car got pimped. And now it has a jacuzzi in the back and a TV system that can only play the Pit My Ride logo. I know I still have a long way to go, but this game is pushing really hard to be the worst game I've ever played. And I don't mean like, yeah, Big Rigs is worse, cause Big Rigs is barely even a game. But look at this, this is a full game, it's just extremely bad. Extremely bad. I know that in the end, this video seems more like a rant, and it might even be, but I really could not find much to say about this game, because that's all that it is. It's a soulless and repetitive racing game with no care put on it. The only thing it has going on is copying ideas from other games and having one of the worst storylines I've ever seen. Oh, you wanna know something funny? I don't know what a satellite award is, but this game somehow got nominated to the category of best sports slash fighting slash racing game. Sadly though, it lost to Burnout Revenge. I guess being based in a real place with real cars didn't help. 
Well, I hope you liked this one. And if you did, make sure to leave a like. It really helps me a lot. And if you have any ideas for other games I should play, let me know in the comments. I always read all of them and I try to answer them too. But anyway, thank you for watching and stay safe. And away from this game.